So added simplest inverse function just kind of means opposite. So like the inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of division is multiplication. So for functions, the inverse of an original is just when the domain and range switch. So it maps the output values back to their original input values. So this just means that the domain of the inverse is actually the range of the original. And then vice versa, the range of the inverse will actually be the domain of the original. So really, all it's saying is that your x and y values switch with each other. So at its simplest, x and y switch, x becomes y, y becomes x. So like, even if you guys aren't given an equation... If you guys have this xy table, even if you, you don't know what the actual function is, we know that if your original relation or function or whatever it is has a point of negative 2, 4, the inverse has to have a point of 4, negative 2. If the original has a point of negative 1, 2, your inverse has a point 2, negative 1. So the signs and things don't switch, literally just x's and y switch. What was x is now y. What was y is now x. 0, 0 will stay. You had 1, negative 2. Now you have negative 2, 1. Had 2, negative 4. Now you've got negative 4, 2. So truly at its simplest, inverse just means domain and range switch. x and y switch. So for problem B, same thing. We don't know what function or equation this goes with, but we know if we're given the domain and range of the original, the domain will become the range, range will become domain. So for your inverse, the domain will be negative infinity to 5, and the range will be 3 to positive. So nothing like switches, goes backwards, frontwards, like... Nothing switches, just x is y, y is now x. So same thing if it gives you a list in set notation. Same exact same thing. So the domain of the inverse would be the range of the original. So that's going to be negative 7, negative 3, negative 2, and 5. And then the range will be the whatever the domain was. So negative 4, 0, 3, and 8. And then the last one. Domain of your inverse will be negative infinity to 4. 4 to positive infinity. Range will be negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 2 to positive. So truly, at its simplest, an inverse function is just the x and y values switched from the original you were given, whether that's an equation, whether it's a list of x, y values, whether it's interval notation, it's just switched. So even if you guys aren't given an equation, you can also do it just with a graph. So for inverses, the graph of the inverse is a diagonal reflection over the line y equals x. So you've got this like diagonal line here. When you graph the inverse, it should be a diagonal reflection of the original. So what we're going to do is we are going to plot, or actually we're going to write these points that were given for the original, because this is the original, f of x. So your first point here is negative 7, negative 6. Then we've got the point right here, which is negative 5, 1. Then negative 3, 2. Negative 1, 3. And 1, 10. So, because we know that the inverse is just your value switched. Since we have the original, we can just switch them for the inverse. So if we had originally negative 7, negative 6, 
We now have negative 6, negative 7. Had negative 5, 1. We will now have 1, negative 5. 2, negative 3. 3, negative 1. 10, 1. And we're going to plot them. So, let's see. Negative 6, negative 7. Make sure I'm counting correctly here. 1, negative 5. 2, negative 3. 3, negative 1. And 10, 1. And do your best to draw it as a um, reflection of the original. Mine's probably not going to be the greatest either. But the point is for you guys to hopefully be able to see that diagonal reflection there. So that should always be the case. So if you're, once we get a look at this, doing these algebraically, once you're given the original and you go to find the inverse, you can always graph both of them to see if they are that diagonal reflection. But just one more time, inverses is really just the domain and ranges switched. Um, just maps the domain back to the range and vice versa range back to the domain. So just switching your X and Y values.